two and a half months ago. Um, which, okay, in my defense, I moved countries, so I didn't really have time to edit. Um, and also, I had to edit my last Paris video. Anyway, I made it to <laughs> Edinburgh. Um, late at night, I was walking through the streets of Edinburgh, and okay, this city is just so cool. Um, I didn't realize that it is literally like diagonally in old Edinburgh. Like, there's all these little secret passages and stairs and stuff. I mean, like, look at that. Tell me that that is not diagonally. Like, what? Look at the little rainbow windows. Oh, this is my hostel that I stayed at. Well, this isn't the actual hostel. The hostel I stayed at was at the old courthouse and jail. Um, and these are a bunch of like government buildings in the square that my hostel was in. So the first thing I did was try and find a cafe to eat in. Um, which, for some reason, they were all closed, but eventually I found a cafe. Not after, um, experiencing this creepy theater mask that somebody added eyes onto. Um, but yeah. Oh, that reminds me that I was trying to use Google Maps to navigate the whole time that I was in Edinburgh. Arrive at Southern Cross Cafe. And let me just tell you, Edinburgh is not built for Google Maps. It has too many, like, weird little bridges and secret staircases and stuff. I did not know what I was doing. Hey, I'm in Edinburgh for the weekend and it's so cold. I can't feel my fingers at all. I just got in last night, um, which was such a schlep. Whoa, hold on, roll back that clip. So, I made it to the plane, but the night before I went on this trip, I was talking to my host dad and he was like, so what airport are you flying out of? And I was like, um, and he was like, uh, probably Ori. And I was like, uh, no, it wasn't that one. And he was like, um, Okay, then it'll be De Gaulle. And I was like, no, um, it's not De Gaulle. And he's like, Beauvais. <laughs> so it turns out the airport that I went to is like uh, far from actual Paris. So I, it was fine. I took the bus, but it was, it was a journey to get there is all. Um, so like would not recommend if you are living in Paris to fly out of Beauvais, but anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> say what you will about Ryanair, but this was actually the most luxurious flight experience I've ever had because I had three seats to myself. I guess nobody wanted to fly out of Beauvais on a Thursday night. Anyway, um, I left the country that was causing me so much grief, which like, okay, no hate to France, no hate to France in this video. France is fine, France is okay, France was not the problem. But once I got into Edinburgh, it was like the easiest airport experience I've ever had. I literally just like showed them my passport and hopped on the tram and now I'm here. Um, and I'm staying at this cute hostel called Code Hostel, um, which is like pretty nice for a hostel. I kind of have my own little pod, um, which is, it's like for a girl who's 5'10". I'm not that tall. I mean, I'm tall, but not like freakishly tall, but the little pod is like just a little bit too short for me and so is the comforter. So my little toes were sticking out all night and I was wearing socks, but it's still December in Edinburgh and it was cold. Um, so anyway, I'm this California girl, I think is holding up better than expected in the cold. Um, I finally have a chance to wear my little pom-pom, <laughs> my little pom-pom hat. Um, and so far I've walked around and it's just like the coolest little city. I love all the little closes where it's like a secret passageway, but it's a street. Um, it's just like so, I can't believe people live here. It's just like architecturally, I've never seen a city like this before. Um, and my brother told me to go to this little poetry library where they have these um, like little sculptures made out of books. So that was the first thing I did after getting something to eat this morning. Which like, 
it's such a me thing to do is go to a library while I only have one day to explore city. And I just went to the Christmas market, which was really cute. I'm in the market for a scarf and Scotland is the place. <laughs> so hopefully I'll find one. Um, and originally I was just gonna stay in Edinburgh the whole weekend because I came in last night, Thursday night. And so I have Friday to, today's Friday to explore. Um, but I think tomorrow I'm actually going to do kind of a Highlands tour and maybe Loch Ness because I think like I I think I would be remiss if I uh, left without seeing at least some beautiful Scotland nature um, which leaves me only today to really explore the city and a little bit on Sunday morning so I'm trying to do as much as I can with the day um, but yeah for a solo trip other if you don't count moving to France <laughs> um, for a solo trip that I um, have really done and so far so good um, yeah I've decided that I'm moving here though so yeah maybe I'll go look at one of the universities or something <laughs> <laughs> so that I have so I can find a reason to live here and to get a visa because I yeah I'm, I'm moving here I've decided also it's supposed to snow on Sunday and I don't know if it's gonna happen while I'm still here but I'm really excited about it apparently it snowed like yesterday and even here on the grass I can see like a little bit of snow left but I haven't seen snowfall in like I don't know, a really long time, not since I was a, a young kid, I think. Um, maybe the last time I saw snowfall was when I was 10 in Paris. Um, I think so. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if I get to see snowfall, but that would make my December, because I've, I've never really had like a truly Christmassy December with snow before. Um, so I'm excited. And then, of course, I'll fly home to California for Christmas and have my, I don't know, I don't know about sunny California Christmas because it is kind of cold there right now, but um, I'll have my California Christmas, which I'm so excited for too. I think like, of course, I like hated my hometown and then I had to move out of the country to find an appreciation for it, but uh, I do miss it and I miss my friends and family from home too, so. Hopefully I will get to see everybody soon. Yeah, I totally forgot that I stopped by, what is it, the National Gallery of Scotland? All the museums are free in Scotland, which is cool, but honestly I was a bit museumed out after Paris. I'm not like, you know, hating on fine art, I'm an artist. I just mean, I, I was over it at this point, okay? I, I'm moving on. So, then I walked up to where the, um, the castle is. You can see it behind me there. I didn't stay there for that long. I was cold and I really wanted to get to Dean Village, but I failed because my bus was canceled twice and I sat in the cold on the ground waiting for this damn bus for so long. So anyway, it never came, um, so I got tea. Canada. Might be a wee bit of a wait for food because there's quite a lot of orders in at the moment, so we can have about 20 minutes. Maybe. Yeah. Edinburgh after this which I didn't film and I got back it was like almost 11 but I found out that there was a chicken shop at the end of the staircase I mean look this, this is literally Harry Potter anyway and I found this little wink shop which had all this like comic and fandom stuff inside it was kind of cool and I sat there eating my chicken wings alone. Um, and yeah, that was my night. So the next morning I had my Highland tour, which we're gonna ignore how terrible I look in these clips. What happened is 
that I set my alarm for the time I was supposed to leave the hostel, not the time I was supposed to wake up. So I was scrambling to get out the door and I was hustling and I walked out and it was snowing and I literally have like seen snow so few times in my life. So I was extremely excited, but also I had to run in the cold to go make <laughs> I can't to believe it's work. snowing. So these clips are kind of hard. Um, so I did make it to my bus, and our first stop was in this little town. I forgot the name of this little town, but I'll, I'll let you know. And I'm telling you, this is the best damn pie. This little pie, wait, go back. This little pie is the best pie I've ever had in my life. Apple walnut, that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say about this little town. After that, we went on a long drive through the highlands toward Loch Ness and our tour driver told us all kinds of interesting stuff about the history of Scotland um, and I mean look at this look at this so so pretty driving up, you've got more product, uh, Loch Lochie, or here, then at the very end we're Loch Bay. So we've got all the different lochs all the way up, but now that I've... Hi, I've arrived at Loch Ness, um, or Loch Ness. Eventually, we made it to Loch Ness, okay. and there was snow on the ground there, which I did not expect. I mean, I was fine Reed. in my little air suits, like, it was okay. Um, it was it was great. It was cold. Anyway, um, yeah, did not see the Loch Ness monster. But there was also a, a cruise available, but literally no one in my group wanted to take that cruise because it was cold. And nobody wanted to be out on the water. I love Scotland. <laughs> I think I've realized that when you travel, your experience is really impacted by the people that you meet when you're there. And Scottish people are some of the like friendliest, most open people that, um, that I've ever met. And it feels like this was a big culture shock for me moving to France, or at least Paris, I think. French people, I think, can be really good friends once you get to know them, but I think it is a little bit more of a closed off culture. Even though I speak the language pretty well, you're less likely to just, like within seconds of meeting somebody, just launch into, you know, um, a dialogue about your lives and your childhoods and where you grew up and um, all of that. And so, I don't know, that's difficult for me living in Paris, especially coming from America. So this has been a nice change of pace. Also, speaking the language fluently does really help with that too. But also this is one of the most naturally beautiful places I've ever been. Uh, my uh, tour driver is really knowledgeable about kind of um, the history of the places we've driven through, but also the natural history. And so I've learned a lot about like 
dormant volcanoes and the lochs and the lake in Scotland. Um, so that's been really cool to learn as well. So those were the two days I really spent in Scotland. After this, I headed home on the airplane the next day um, and I fell asleep on the bus and I woke up as we were um, <laughs> as we were driving back into Edinburgh. I woke up um, to the tour driver going, uh, there's someone in the back who needs a little bit of music to wake up, so we're gonna put on some tunes. So she wakes up and then he started blasting Adele, like the Adele song from Skyfall, which I guess is thematic because that was shot in Scotland. Um, and then he was also telling us about how we were driving back into Scotland on this illegal bridge that is actually closed, but sometimes they let him in. <laughs> Um, because the bridge is not stable for traffic. Um, yeah, anyway, it was fine. At the beginning of this tour, we drove out of Edinburgh past the Edinburgh jail. And the tour guide is like kind of making some jokes about it. And he's like, yeah, I was at the jail down at Perth for like 17 years. And I was like, okay. But then like an hour and a half later, it turned out that he was um, actually a not in prison. He was like a prison guard, which I feel like would have been pertinent information to mention. But um, uh, yeah, so I just spent like an hour and a half thinking that he was a formal, former inmate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell here is this being bred to the village? So we'll, we'll just stop at the... Anyway, Scotland was definitely the highlight of my time in Europe. Thanks for watching.